Did she just start doing this this year? This the, this little section of the farm? Chris built, um, it took him, a, we moved here in 2010 and this space already existed and he just gutted it and built into it to create the shop and the creamery. It took him a couple years um, for us to get it all done and get licensed. So we've probably been making cheese for and selling it as a licensed dairy for nine or 10 years. Wow. Um, but this year we're trying to add more products and um, make it kind of a fun destination in addition to cheese. Part of that is we have more and more visitors coming. If we have 50 people to yoga twice a week, that's 100 people who want to buy products. And um, we really want to stick at a herd of 30 dairy goats so that we can take care of each one individually. So we can't really expand our milking capacity, um, but we can you know, bring in other products from other farms or people locally that would be kind of sweet. You're, so milking capacity and the number with the babies, how many babies did you have this year? Let's think. So I think we have almost 60 babies right now. So we have about 90 goats on the farm currently. So what happens with the additional goats? All of um, our goats are sold to people who reserve a space on our waiting list almost a year in advance. So nothing's, none of them are bought on a whim. They go in pairs or threes to families who have been dreaming about them for a long time. I didn't even know that. Yep, That's and awesome. every month through winter, we send kind of a newsletter about goat keeping so that people are really well informed by the time they pick them up. And that's how you got into it, was just getting a couple of goats, Got right? a couple of goats for our daughter, and then she warned us. She said, <laughs> we started with a couple of goats as a 4-H project, and we looked around, and there was like 100 goats. We said, we're never going to do that. <laughs> here we are <laughs> and we wow. really haven't ever looked back it's been so every step of the way has been so much fun and we've just kind of been following the joy of it yeah. into each new year and seeing where it brings us and here we are I asked her husband if he ever gets overwhelmed and he said no he's uh, a pretty he, chill guy yeah <laughs> I married he, the right guy well, for I was this just gonna say, enterprise <laughs> he just follows your directions is basically what he told me <laughs> that's not true <laughs> We're a great team because he has a lot of skills um, in terms of building. He built this entire place. It's beautiful. Yeah, he's great at, um, you know, the more analytical side of the business, but he also has a gigantic heart. And then I'm more the goat mom who does all the, um, you know, really paying attention to their health every single day yeah. and the emotional needs of the farm yeah. and the people who come and, um, and then the products. Kind of my thing. The spirit. The spirit. <laughs> the spirit. Chris is Chris is great with people who who come visit. I, if I, so many people say Chris warmly greeted my grandma. He put her in a rocking chair, put the perfect goat in her lap. He's really great at just kind of in being intuitive about what the situation needs and and um, treating people well. You know, like everybody's his grandma. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Which is sweet. Yeah. Actually, our barn cat is named after his grandma, <laughs> Virginia. So if you see her around, That's awesome. <laughs> when we see her, we say hello, Virginia. And then you, you and you name every goat. Every right? goat has a name. Yes. Yeah. Kind of hard to keep up with all those names. Well, they're really each so in such individual creatures. It would be like your dogs. You wouldn't have yeah. a dog without a name, and you yeah. wouldn't mix up your dogs. Same with us. Yeah. They're they're really. Especially Nigerian dwarf. You're goats. talking to somebody who has three kids and can never get their names. Ah! So, <laughs> it's, it's not that you yeah. don't know them, though. <laughs> That's funny. The, yeah. uh, this is amazing. Cool. You want to so, see the Yeah, cheese I want to see the kitchen. Come on in. Right now, the fridge is empty, so we won't look in there. I have a lot of work to do over the next couple days. <laughs> So this is the cheese kitchen that Chris built. We're licensed, which I love because the state comes and tests all our products once a month, um, brings our milk, all our cheese, brings it back to the state lab and makes sure that everything is perfect. It also gives us information about um, the butterfat content of our milk at any given time in the season and the protein, which is so amazing. How much does it shift? I think it's, it shifts a lot. Does the butterfat content doubles over the season. Yep, and the protein so goes that. up over the season. So, so. That, that, does that have to do with the 
maturity in the feed? Or less milk. An animal that makes less milk tends to be higher in butter fat content. Yep. So at the height of their production, the butter fat content might be a little bit lower, but then when they start uh, to make less and less milk, it's more, um, well, it's higher in butter fat content. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, this is a two gallon vat. This will make, these two combined, will make about 20 uh, six ounce containers of Chev. By the end of the season, those will make like 40, double the amount of cheese, which is amazing. So how long a process is it to make the chef? Cheese? That's always, I love that question because um, it depends how far you take it back, right? Do we yep. take it back to the guy in New Gloucester who did the hay, who cut the hay? Or the day uh, in awesome. August yeah. when Chris right. went over there and it was 90 degrees and he got all the hay up into our loft, 25 bales of goat for the year. Um, or do you bring it back to the goats grazing yesterday or you know the water that we fed them, brought them. But the actual process of making Chev, it's the simplest cheese in the world. It's kind of magic. We bring in the milk from the milking room. We pasteurize it in those little pasteurizers. Then we um, add a quarter a teaspoon of culture and three drops of rennet, and it just sits for 12 hours. So by morning or by evening, it's ready to hang like we're doing here. And then it will hang, the curds will hang in this cheesecloth and the whey will drip out. And by dinner tonight, I'll add a little bit of salt to this put it out in the fridge, and people will be eating cheese that was sunshine and hay yesterday. That's amazing, right? I mean, that's like beautiful magic. Yeah. We only make the simplest cheeses because we were juggling um, teaching and farming for a long, long time. We were teachers for 29, 30 years, so uh, to us it just made sense with our schedules, and now really I just love there's something about the simplicity of the process which attracts me. I don't really, at this point in life, I don't have interest in a more complicated cheese, but I really admire people who do make hard cheeses and aged cheeses, and I love to eat them. I'm just not interested in making them. <laughs> so we do chev and feta. And then how do you package it? What do you, what do you put it in when it's ready to go? The six ounce containers yeah, we, um, I think if I have one out there, I can show you the finished one. So this is what the cheese looks like. This one is my favorite because it's in rosemary. This was just in the fridge, so the rosemary solidified, but that is so delicious. And this is the fresh chef. So pure, so good. It's just so fresh. How many of those containers do you think you sell in a year? Maybe on average, 40 chef a day, once it all balances out. Yeah. And we definitely could sell a ton more cheese than yeah. we can make, so we sell out every week um, easily. I, I wish I had more milk But to like play you with. said, I mean, you, you said that you limit it to 30 goats because you want to make sure they're cared for. Yeah, yeah. I think we, if we brought, we considered bringing it up to the next level, getting more goats, fencing in more property, all of that. Um, but then everything would change. It would become a different farm than it is right now. And right now, Chris and I can do every single job ourselves. We've never hired a single thing out to anyone else. No one mows our lawn. No one tends the goats. No one makes the cheese. We can do everything ourselves, and there's some pride in that. But there's also um, it becomes a meditative process because you don't have to talk through everything. You can just do it on your own. Probably like planting a garden yeah. or yeah. doing anything that you can do on your own at your own pace when you have time to do it. It, it, it it's pretty lovely. Um, so if we scaled up, it would become a totally different operation and I'm not sure the things that I love about it would still be yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this place is beautiful. It is such a balance of what, how much time you have for the manual labor of it, because 
farming is all time. It's all manual labor and time, dedication. Yes. And I see what you're saying and it resonates so well with me that you're prioritizing the joy. You have to keep that ingredient as the primary ingredient in your farm. Otherwise, like that's why people come. That's why they show up for yoga and why they show up for uh, Saturdays on the farm and come to the farm stand. Because it's pretty much open all the time, right? Just Saturday. Oh, just Saturday. Yes, never mind. <laughs> Since our house, we really it used to be open when we really needed to sell the cheese. It used to be open any time, but we really have scaled it back to just Saturdays, eleven to five, so we can get other stuff done. Yeah. Now that it's become larger, it's uh, you know, so we have time to visit the family and do other stuff. But uh, except for for neighbors, neighbors walk up whenever they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Goats are like the people you like the best. Like who live in the moment, they yeah. they leap around for no reason. They yes, little terrors. They're yeah. snuggly. Two, two, leaps, uh, two leaps around for no oh, reason. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you ever do that? I mean, all of them. <laughs> yes. yes. I think you do. I think you do. Yeah. They they have the best qualities, so they attract people who are similar or who, who who are missing those qualities in their life and really want to reconnect with those younger more kid-like parts of their yeah. personality. Yeah. So that's where the magic comes from, it's the goats. It's the goats and the people who come here um, who leave a little bit of that. Even the babies every year who come. You think about 60 babies every year who have lived here over 10, they've all left a little bit of that leap. Oh, and, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. That. And people just, remember them. People who visit know all their names still. Yeah. Like, remember this goat and remember this goat. That's so true. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just All right, Autumn, do you think you could go home and make this now? <laughs> you give me a kitchen. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you give me goats, so I will give you a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have one, don't you? Don't you have a little yes. Uh, yeah, we do have a kitchen upstairs. Yeah, just for when I'm bored. Anyone can make this in their house. If, um, actually, New England Cheese Making Company sells a little rennet and culture packet that's freeze dried together and they're really cheap. So, if you can find fresh milk somewhere, that's the trick. Awesome. Um, you could make it in your own kitchen and, you know, it's delicious. Or just come here on Saturdays for what? Yeah. <laughs> to do and get your own. Exactly. 